everybody. Welcome, welcome. welcome everybody. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. This is Michalis Psilos from Naftemboriki and the famous... I'm Juliet Mann from CGTN. So, it's a great honor to co-host this uh, very remarkable uh, event. Over the past five decades, Greece and China have nurtured a deep and enduring friendship with strategic uh, collaboration and mutual benefits across all over the, the fields, from communications to, en to energy, from maritime transport to port operations, the two nations have not only built strong uh, strategic partnership, but have also leveraged common objectives. And of course, 2023 has a particular significance because it marks 10 years of the Belt and Road exactly. Initiative, or the BRI. Now, if we look back on the progress over the last mm -hmm. decade, you can see that there are some real seeds, seeds planted for an incredible future of collaboration and partnerships. Now, we already know that the BRI has laid a, a strong foundation in particular for cementing those ties between China and, and, and Greece. And, um, and we're going to build upon those. Uh, at this event, wind in the sails, we're all here together to explore the possibilities of things that might be to come and also ask how we're going to make it all happen. Exactly. We are delighted today to be joined by diverse participants pro from all over the world, here uh, both online and here in person. To begin, we are privileged to have a impressive selection of keynote speakers to provide their unique perspectives on the vital topic of China and Europe and, of course, Greece, communication and cooperation. First of all, uh, let us welcome Christos Tilianidis, Greece Minister for Maritime Affairs and Insular Policy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Stylianidis yesterday evening has testing positive for COVID. So he sent us a very warm message by video. We can follow it. Take a look. Αξιότιμοι mm -hmm. κύριοι Υπουργοί της Λαϊκής Δημοκρατίας της Κίνας και της Ελλάδας, Ministers of the People's Republic of China and Greece, dear guests of the entrepreneurial community in Greece and China, ladies and gentlemen. It is a true honor to me to address today in such an eminent audience in the framework of a forum that uh, highlights the relations in between China and Greece. I would have wanted to be there, but unfortunately I'm a COVID positive and that is why I'm having this video message contact with you and communication. China and Greece are two countries that have always had ties of friendship. They have been together in relationship of mutual respect and support. That is why today's event is yet another opportunity to empower the cooperation of our country in the shipping industry. And of course, both countries can benefit from that. As we know, Greece is a worldwide shipping power and has one of the biggest communities of ship owners globally, the value of which is worldly renowned. It is characteristic that the ships managed by Greece are at a record high. They go beyond the threshold of 5,500 ships, keeping Greek shipping among the top in the world. Furthermore, on a world level, Greek ship owners are the one-third of uh, tankers and the one-fourth of bulk carriers. We should here say that quite high is the percentage in specialized ships, that is, the transfer ships for LNG and LPG, with approximately 22.5% and 11.5% respectively. A characteristic of the Greek ship owners is the fact that Greeks do invest a lot in new energy-friendly ships and into equipment that is environmental friendly. The orders to build ships by Greek ship owners amount to 241 ships, while one out of six ships of transfer for LNG are shipped right now and will be delivered to Greek ship owners, something that is very important. Yeah. 
Οι ελληνικέ παραγγελίε είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικέ τόσο σε αριθμό όσο και σε μέγεθο πλοίου. Furthermore, this is a true proof when it comes to the relationship with China, as I told you before, because in the Chinese shipyards, Greek place orders are very significant, both in numbers and in size of ships. According to estimations, since 2000 until today, after 23 years at least, more than 1,300 ships have been built by Greek ship owners in China, and the overall value of the shipbuilding is more than 60 billion euros. More particularly, in the last decade, half of uh, the Greek newly built ships were built in China. The management of the ships obviously presupposes a very powerful shipping cluster. Shipping companies that are located in Greece, mainly here in Piraeus, are more than 1,570, while we see the operation of more than 3,600 shipping companies that uh, do manage smaller ships. Without any arrogance, and as a minister of uh, maritime affairs, I would like to say that these elements do highlight Piraeus and one significant shipping hub next to Shanghai and other ports. Furthermore, Greek ports, due to the geostrategic position, are used by China as a hub to transfer a big volume of uh, its own exporting trade to Europe, the Balkans, and the Eastern Mediterranean. Especially when it comes to the port of Hyreus, I think that it is very important to know that it has become one of the most important investments of the Chinese company Costco, and undoubtedly is a very important point for the Chinese initiative Belt and Road. Moreover, the added advantage of the port of Hyreus in the field of cruise ships undoubtedly will work as a new accelerator in many financial activities. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody could deny that during the last years, shipping and our seafarers have been tested by the content that continues big, unprecedented challenges. The unprecedented situations of the pandemic that we have only, never experienced before, the Russian invasion in Ukraine and the threat that came by the war of energy and food crisis quite prolonged, I would say, reversed the data even in shipping. So amidst these difficult conditions, our shipping industry managed to adapt to new practices and rules. It managed to evolve and prosper, serving at the same time society, the economy and the environment. During the last year, we have all been talking, and quite rightly, about decarbonization, innovative technology through fuel, new investment. The Greek government, a member of uh, the European Union, of course, our country, you know, does share fully the need to meet a carbon neutrality of shipping activities until 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our duty not just to bequeath a sustainable but a better future to the next generation. That is why, as a Greek government, we work with the IMO and the European Union so that shipping can smoothly continue to offer world to worldwide economy while at the same time it is realistic and, let me repeat, it is realistic when it comes to its pathway towards decarbonization. For a gradual transition to a future that will not be based for life in fossil fuels, and that, very important, is a mixture of targeted and agile, both private and public financing. As a former commissioner of the EU, let me remind you that this is a position that everybody understands and adopts. Because if we are not realistic, we can never meet these big goals. The same pathway of sustainable development is uh, something we aspire for our ports through the content they use, but also through the bigger use of our ports and islands. The Greek government believes that the ports are leverage of development of local societies, and I do believe that it will be a multiplier for labor posts in general and local economies. My dear friends, Having said that, I do believe that Greece and China will can truly deepen our bilateral relationship both in the field of shipping and in other sea-related sectors. For instance, the 
transport sector, the supply chain, the industry of maritime equipment, RES, energy storage, and carbon, and many more. This to a mutual benefit for these two countries. Our peoples and, of course, our businesses can come closer together and build a better future based on what we call common ground. Exactly that is the main targeting of the added value of this forum. Thank you so much for your attention and I wish you every success to your proceedings. I do apologize for not being able to be there with you, but you understand that I couldn't overcome this COVID-related issue. I would like to deeply thank the organizers who gave me this opportunity to address this conference and to have with you this type of communication. Thank you very much for your attention. Η εφοδιαστική αλυσίδα, η βιομηχανία θαλάσσιου εξοπλισμού, οι ανανεώσιμε πηγέ ενέργεια, η αποθήκευση ενέργεια και άνθρακα και άλλε πολλέ. Αυτά βέβαια όλα προ αμοιβαίο όφελο των δύο χωρών μα. Οι λαοί μα και φυσικά οι επιχειρήσει μα μπορούν να έρθουν ακόμα πιο κοντά και να οικοδομήσουν ένα καλύτερο μέλλον βασιζόμενοι σε αυτό που λέμε common ground, κοινό έδαφο. Αυτή ακριβώς, πιστεύω, είναι και η βασική στόχευση και η προστιθέμενη αξία και του σημερινού φόρου. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ για την προσοχή σας. Ευχόμαι κάθε επιτυχία στις εργασίες του σημερινού φόρου. Απολογούμε και πάλι, γιατί δεν είμαι εκεί μαζί σας. Ήταν λόγοι που με υπερεύαινα. Και θα ευχαριστήσω πολύ τους οργανωτές, οι οποίοι μου έδωσαν αυτή την ευκαιρία να επικοινωνήσω μαζί σας ακόμα και διαμέσου αυτού του τύπου επικοινωνίας. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Well, a big thank you there to Mr. Christos um, Stiliandis. We wish him, of course, a speedy recovery. Lots of big numbers there, right? Lots of big numbers really proving that the opportunities for Europe and China um, and local economies is going to be big business, especially when it comes to the green transition. Well, now, I have a great honor in introducing our next speaker. Um, it is the China's ambassador to Greece, and His Excellency, Xiao Jun Chong. Over to you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as to major world powers and civilizations, China and Europe are not divided by any serious conflicts of interests, nor geopolitical disputes. Both benefit from each other's development. Both adhere to the principles of strategic autonomy and multilateralism. And together, we have reached a broad consensus on tackling global issues such as such as uh, climate change. China is the EU's second largest trading partner, its largest source of imports, and its third largest export market. Despite intensifying geopolitical tensions around the world, trade relations between both sides remains close with trade volume consistently reaching new heights. According to the Eurosat data, in 2022, the trade volume between the 27 EU countries and China reached, five, reached 856 billion euros, a year-on-year -year base increase of 22.8%. The healthy development of China-EU relations is beneficial for building a multipolar world, jointly addressing global challenges. Furthermore, it can also provide greater stability and more positive energy to the world. China and Greece are among the world's greatest shipping countries with a long history of close cooperation in the shipping industry. At present, with the international community facing unprecedented challenges, a global consensus has been reached to promote green and low-carbon transformation. China and, the U, uh, China and Europe have complementary advantages in terms of technology, funds, and markets in its field. 
with great、uh, with green policies gradually becoming the most prominent aspect of China EU cooperation. We are pleased to see that in recent years. Many Chinese companies are becoming actively involved in Greece's green transformation and green development. In the year of 2020, the port of Piraeus,、uh, with the Costco Shipping's active engagement, was awarded the title of European Green Port, and China Energy Investments Wind Farm Project. In Sarai's continuous to contribute to Greece's green transformation, we are looking forward to see that green development and low emissions become the new highlight of China-Greece cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen,、uh, in the first half of this year, China's GDP. Grew by 5.5 percent compared to the previous year, significantly outpacing other major countries. This export of、uh, the export of high-tech products such as lithium batteries, solar panels, and electric vehicles grew by six by 61.6 percent. Despite the general downturn in cross-border、uh, investment, foreign capital has continued to flow into China, with a total of 24,000 new foreign enterprises being, is, being established in, the,、uh, in this country, a year-on-year -year increase of 35.7 percent. China represents. 14 percent of total exports of goods globally, and remains the world's largest exporter of goods. The fundamental strength of the Chinese economy is resilience, immense potential, and long-term vitality will remain unchanged. We have the confidence and the capabilities to promote economic development. In a sustainable and healthy way, to give new impetus to global economic recovery, and through our own new development, provide more opportunities for countries around the world, including Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, this year marks the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. China is willing to set on its journey together with its European friends. Including Greece, to deepen our bilateral friendly exchanges and cooperation, to join hands in promoting green and sustainable development, to share development、uh, opportunities and prosper together. Last but not least, I wish today's dialogue a great success. Thank you. Thank you so much,、uh, Your Excellency, for.、Uh, This remarkable speech. I would like to say that today in Naftaboriki we published an interview that uh, uh, Ambassador Xiao、uh, has given to me two days ago. This is uh, the, uh, the Naftaboriki and the interview. The title, the title of the interview is that we have to combine the blue of Aegean and the red of China. Dear,、uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much. For、uh, your friendship、uh, for Greece. So, next we next we have Vasiliki Loizou, Secretary General for Private Investments,、uh, Ministry of Development. She will represent、uh, Minister Skrekas because he has a lot of things to do quite now. Because uh, the uh, parliamentarians of New Democracy are gathering to the Parliament with、uh, Prime Minister Mitsotakis. So, Mrs. Loizou. Thank you so much. Hello, good morning,、uh, Mr. Ambassador, distinguished guests.、Uh, I was told that I will speak in Greek, so uh, uh, sorry for my Greek because I understand the rest、uh, are going to speak in English.、Uh, Ambassador, good morning,、really、dear guests. Good morning. I've been told to speak in Greek, so I do apologize for、uh, my Greek. 
because I understand that all the others will speak in English. I'm deeply happy to be here and I represent the minister, but also the government. Indeed, I had the opportunity to collaborate with the ambassador, even with my previous hat at uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and at the same time as a General Secretary responsible for financial markets and now as a General Secretary responsible for private investment. We shall have the chance to cooperate, cooperate even further and at the same time we will have the chance along with Mr. Krekas, the competent minister that is, to represent our country into the initiative One Bed, One Road next month in a few days in China. I will continue in Greek. I would also like to say that we must congratulate the organizers for this event. It is a topic that gives us the opportunity to discuss the very important relationship with China, but at the same time the importance that the shipping has for our country. Shipping is the most important sector that along with tourism can be combined into a very powerful economy. An economy that quite recently, through the many efforts of the government of Kyriakos Mitsotakis, we have managed to bring Greece to the forefront. We have conquered the investment grade, but let me also insist on the following. We are not the last ones, but we do innovate in spite of difficulties, in spite of crisis, in spite of COVID, in spite of energy crisis. Έχουμε καταφέρει να φέρουμε την Ελλάδα στο προσκήνιο, έχουμε κατακτήσει την επενδυτική βαθμίδα. Δεν είμαστε ουραγοί, αλλά πρωτοπορούμε παρά τις δυσκολίες, παρά τις κρίσεις, παρά το COVID, παρά ε, την ενεργειακή Thus, κρίση. Thus, we're given the chance even more to cooperate with a big force, with a big country like China, so that we can meet our objectives and deepen even further our cooperation. Pericles used to say that big is the nation of sea, and today we can say that 2,000 years later this quote is quite trendy, because shipping and seafarers are these factors that can link us all and create these conditions for global peace, cooperation and a better economy. Many figures have been said, I will not repeat the statistics that the Minister of Maritime Affairs has just said about the importance of Greek shipping, but I think that we all know and it is commonly accepted that Greek shipping covers a big percentage of uh, transfers and shipping overall. It covers more than 20% of tonnage of uh, ships throughout the world. And if we take into account that more than 90% of world trade comes through sea, we can highlight the importance of that number even further. The investment of China in Greece are the ones that have contributed greatly so that we can have a record. We moved with 7.2 billion last year in 2022 in foreign direct investments and investments that are taking place in the port of Piraeus that empower our country and make it competitive, linking Asia with us and making Greece a gateway to Europe. Of course, we have many more to do to empower our country, enforce our very way, link them with our ports, improve the framework, but for sure we are moving in a pathway that Greece can play the role of a hub, not just geographically or strategically, as we're used to. Και επενδύσεις που γίνονται και στο λιμάνι του Πειραιά δυναμώνουν ε, τη χώρα μας ε, και την κάνουν ακριβώς ανταγωνιστική, συνδέοντας ε, την Ασία ε, και κάνοντας την Ελλάδα μια πύλη προς ε, την Ευρώπη συνολικά. Asia and Africa, but also we can truly use the geographic uh, position to make Greece a regional power, using exactly our relationship with China, since China is uh, the protagonist in worldwide trade and plays a key role overall, so that we can use Greece as a gateway to transfer 
its products to Europe and enhance even further our role. Obviously, the ambassador talked about the importance of green and digital transition. Our goals are common towards this end, so there is a wide range of the possibility of cooperation to deepen even further these opportunities and create these conditions to the benefit both of Greece and China, but also to the benefit of our planet, because Benefits can really be seen where there are partnerships between countries that will create the conditions of peace and prosperity. Let me wish you fruitful proceedings today, but unfortunately, due to other obligations, I cannot attend this conference until the end. I'm pretty certain that we will have the chance later on through a video format to follow the conference and I shall deeply cooperate with all of you wearing the hat of the General Secretariat, but also personally as Vicky, because I truly believe in the force and in the power of sea, a sea of opportunities to steal the title of the next panel, something that can, can unite countries, people, businesses, and create a very hopeful future. Thank you so much for your attention. Και να δημιουργήσουμε ε, αυτές τις συνθήκες που θα είναι προς όφελος ε, όχι μόνο της Ελλάδας και της Κίνας, αλλά ολόκληρο του κόσμου, γιατί οι καλές συνεργασίες ανάμεσα στις χώρες ε, είναι αυτές που δημιουργούν ε, τις ε, παγκόσμιες συνθήκες ειρήνης και ευημερία. Να ευχηθώ καλή επιτυχία στις εργασίες σας. Δυστυχώς, λόγω του ότι και εγώ κλήθηκα τελευταία στιγμή να εκπροσωπήσω, δεν θα έχω τη δυνατότητα να κάτσω μέχρι το τέλος και να παρακολουθήσω τις εργασίες του συνεδρίου. Ε, είμαι όμως σίγουρη ότι θα έχω την ευκαιρία, έστω βιντεοσκοπημένα, ή σε συνέχεια να συνεργαστώ σε βάθος και από τη θέση μου ως γενική γραμματέας, αλλά και ως Βίκη, για να τη πιστεύω πραγματικά στη δύναμη που έχει η θάλασσα, η θάλασσα ευκαιριών ε, κλέβοντας τον τίτλο από το επόμενο πάνελ, που μπορεί πραγματικά να ενώσει ε, χώρες, ανθρώπους, επιχειρήσεις, ε, και να ε, δημιουργήσει ένα ευίωνο μέλλον. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Mrs. Loisu, thank you, Mrs. Loisu. Um, really important there to, to hear about how key Greek shipping is to, to the economy and, of course, the role of Greece as being that gateway um, to Europe, linking Europe um, to Asia um, and beyond. Um, well, next, we have a video message. This is from Zhu Li Rong, the president of China Ship Owners at Mutual Assurance Association. Ting 我们身边的比利埃夫斯港见证了中欧中西合作的平和发展也作为全球最主要的传统国之一希腊与中国在共建二十一世纪海上丝绸之路方面有着广阔的合作前景一是深化基础设施合作发挥一带一路带动作用根据希腊智库经济与工业研究所的报告到两零二五年比港项目将为
海上丝绸之路建设的成果将辐射到更多领域、更多地区。二是加强数字化转型合作，实现“一带一路”标准对接。目前由中原海运牵头，包括达菲、德国哈勃罗拓等欧洲港航企业共同参与的全球航运商业网络 GSBN 区块链平台。正在推出无纸化放货、电子提单等服务，提高物流效率，降低贸易成本。未来通过中欧双方航运贸易数字化标准的对接，双边贸易增长活力将进一步释放。三是拓展绿色低碳合作，培育“一带一路”新增长点。今年七月，国际海事组织已经将航运实现净零排放的目标时间设定在。接近两零五零年前后，在绿色能源生产、绿色船研研发、绿色金融服务方面，欧洲具有先发优势；在绿色船舶建造、绿色船舶运营方面，中国也在快速起步。中欧双方优势互补，通过深化合作，必将为“一带一路”拓展新的发展空间。同时，中欧之间不断深化的经贸往来。也为包括航运保险在内的航运服务业合作创造了条件。作为中国唯一的国际性保培协会，中国船东互保协会致力于为全球船东提供多险种、一站式的海上保险服务。随着协会国际化发展战略的持续推进，我们欢迎希腊乃至欧洲更多航运企业关注中船保，共同寻求新的合作机遇。不断丰富“一带一路”港航合作的内涵，努力实现互利共赢。各位朋友、女士们、先生们，明天就是中国传统的中秋佳节，这次机会，我仅代表中国传统互保协会，祝大家合家团圆、幸福美满，预祝本次活动圆满成功。谢谢。Thank you, President Xu Liang. And also for his warm wishes for Naftemboriki, as you know, Naftemboriki next year will close 100 years of publication. Thanks again for his warm wishes. And now I would like to welcome on the podium Mr. Gregor Kolodko, is former Deputy Premier and Minister of Finance of Poland, but now is Professor. Of the famous University of Kosminski in uh, in Warsaw. Is is it is correct your title? Uh, thank you so much. Nihal, thank you for the invitation. Um, indeed, I've been most of my life an economist, uh, university man of science, but since my Research has been policy-oriented. A couple of times I was invited to join the government of my country, Poland being four times deputy prime minister and minister of finance. And in this capacity, I was also in this town of Athens on 16th of April of 2003 when we signed the historical Treaty of Accession to the European Union. But then was then, and now it's now, so I'm again professor, I'm teaching my students and doing my research at Kosminski University in Warsaw, but I'm also a distinguished professor of Belt and Road School of Beijing Normal University. And I do publish a lot. My most recent book just published is called Global Consequences of Russia's Invasion Against of, of Ukraine, politics and economics of the second Cold War. So from this perspective, I think it is so important that we have countries like Poland and Greece, that we have business people here in Greece, in Poland, elsewhere. We have intellectuals which are doing whatever is possible to be pragmatic and to develop the cooperation between China, and our part of the world, our particular countries, regions, cities, people, but our European Union, to take advantage of the wind and to move forward, not to be engaged in the Cold War, which actually has been started by US. 
different stories, relations between us and Russia after this shameful invasion of Ukraine. But as far as the Cold War and trade war and protectionism, which is against the winds of economic cooperation, it was initiated by the United States. And from this perspective, I think it's very good that at the southern end, Greece, and at the northern end, Poland, are a firm members of the first 16, then 17, now 14 plus one initiative within the project of Belt and Road, in, Belt and Road Initiative, which China celebrates so much the 10th anniversary of. So the hard part of the road, like the harbor in Piros, and the Maritime Silk Road, or the China-European Railway Express, which goes all the way from Chongqing in Southwest China to Europe, and a very important hub of this hard part of land Silk Road is Poland. It has contributed a lot to the figure we just heard, that the trade between China and the European Union, and that what that would be not possible if not Greek and Polish maritime and land hub is uh, firmly of $800 billion. In a couple of years, we will notify it that trade China-Europe will hit $1 trillion. And that is at the time where we have this ill-advised protectionism, resurgence of nationalism, xenophobia, second Cold War. So I'm very much, we are in Greece, I'm Polish, but I'm very much with the influential European policymaker, much more influential than, say, our leaders or your leaders here. I'm referring to President of France, Macron, when he said recently that alliance doesn't imply vassalization, and he meant relation between France and European Union and the United States. I do agree. We are within NATO. We are an ally of the United States in this era of unfortunate conflict, cold conflict, etc., contradictions. But we are not in position to be in favor of any kind of vassalization. And President of France also said that the kind of conflict called, fortunately for the time being, and hope it will stay so, and it will be solved, and there will be another firm, pragmatic cooperation in the future between, between these two giants of the contemporary world and world of the future, that the conflict between US and China is not, um, is very much influential upon what is going here, but we are not going to take a, a position in this type of the war, not a side. It's not our business to be engaged in this cold world mentality of some hawks in NATO, in London, in Brussels, in Washington, but also in Poland, unfortunately, as far as current government and the opposition is concerned. There is not very big difference between them from this perspective, which is a pity, if not just a shame. So therefore, I put a great trust being an economist, but also being from time to time a policymaker, an advisor, a public commentator, that there is such a sound cooperation between businesses, entrepreneurs, investors, managers um, in countries like Greece, in countries like Poland, and elsewhere in the world, because it is the best contribution to mutual understanding, not only to better condition of life, to make more profits if you are involved in business or to raise standard of living if we do work in these businesses. But simply, it's another conduit to understand us a little bit more to cooperate. And for that reason, I have contributed recently a short essay to China Daily about soft aspect of the Belt and Road Initiative, to which I would like to pay attention also within the business circle, but we have also people from media here. It is a time to give a nudge, to push forward this great initiative of Belt and Road uh, and 
cooperation towards more of intellectual exchange, more exchange of culture, of students, of literature, of travel. I'm staying somewhere, I stayed one night here in Athens, not far away from here, in a Mantina hotel, at not very many people, and I was taking a break for a short, short walk, a bus has come, and about 40 plus Chinese tourists. The more tourists here, the better. Of course, for business people, it's another business. I'm sure that the hotel owner is very happy that despite one guest from Poland, he has 40 plus guests from China, and they're spending much more money here than I do. But we have to exchange more students, more ideas to bring more not only our businesses, our technologies, our know-how, our products and services, but also our minds and our souls. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kolodko, talking there about the importance of the cultural exchange, about you've got how you should share ideas um, and that have some more students moving in between countries, that aspect of, of the Belt and Road, as well as setting that geopolitical picture as well. Thank you very much to you, Professor. Um, our, our next keynote is another video message, and this one is from uh, Mr. Tu Huang Xiao, the Executive Director of the Board of Directors of the Shanghai Advanced Institute of Finance, who is also the former Secretary General of the China Securities Regulatory Commission. Take a look. 各位嘉宾, 各位朋友, 呃, 大家好。我非常高兴啊来受邀参加呃施鲁上的新征程啊特别节目那么大家也知道呃那么随着我们全球啊呃在应对可持续发展方面的一些挑战啊应该说呢呃我们都必须做出应对那么在可持续发展的这个过程当
Uh, he talked about uh, green finance, green credit. All of us want, we, we want a more green world. At this stage, I will uh, I would like to call to the, sta to the stage Mr. George Xiradakis, uh, the famous, you know, George Xiradakis is the famous, the most famous moderator in uh, all over Greece. So it's very honor for us, Mr. Xiradakis, to be here with us. Thank you very much, George. If, if this is famous, uh, then uh, where I'm going to go here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us here. You know, this is uh, not, uh, uh, actually, this is not uh, a gathering just to be once again in the TV. <laughs> it is a gathering of wise Easy. people from China exactly. and Greece exactly. in order to exactly to see and grab the opportunities of synergy yeah. between, two, between two nations that they have been working for centuries, not to say for millenniums. And uh, the best example of the success of this uh, cooperation is, uh, is what is happening with under the, the, under the management of uh, uh, Chairman U here, U here in uh, Greece with the Port of Piraeus, and of course what is happening with uh, the 60 billion investment of, of a few Greek ship owners that they order ships in China. And when I'm saying few, if, let's say, 60 billion people were placed in orders for the last 15 years in Chinese shipyards at, from a small country like Greece. So you can imagine how important is this uh, relationship between the two nations. Uh, I'm not going to take more time from you, but uh, what I would suggest is to present you uh, uh, the, the panel that we will have over here, but the rule is the following. We won't have long speeches. Each one will introduce himself. He's going to speak about the past, the present, and the prospect for their uh, involvement in the Hellenic Chinese uh, uh, business uh, field. And certainly, uh, after that, each one is going to be open to receive one or two questions. And if someone uh, from the audience wants to challenge uh, the other party of the, of the, of the panel, it's going to be really very, very uh, welcomed. Uh, uh, I have to follow a bit uh, here the, the script, because uh, this expert, uh, Julia, was uh, really fantastic. You can join me if you want. I mean, I will be happy to have you here. And after all, together we are, I think, much better than uh, being alone myself, no? Two, two is definitely better than one, but why don't we invite all of the panellists for okay. this session let's, who are here let's, to come and let's take their seats. Let's be all the panellists here, Mr. Michael Bodoroglu, uh, and you can clap as well, I mean, just to, to, uh, just to salute them, all of them. Uh, Michalis Bodoroglu, Chairman of Forces Marine SA, Dr. Lucas Bar uh, Barbaris, uh, Barbaris from Chairman from uh, Safe Barkers. Luca, you can continue clapping, please. <laughs> Just, we, you know, we have to this. Mr. George Dermati, Sale and Purchase Director, Intermodal, Sea Brokers. Mr. Yu Zhengang, Executive Chairman of Pyreus Sport Authority. Mr. Yu, please, can you please join me here? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Li Fang Li, Director of the Board of Pres and President of Sundong Port Group, he is on the screen, oh, yep. certainly. Mr. Uh, Tracy Huang, De Deputy Director of Hainan Province Bureau of International and Economic De uh, Development. Mr. George Plevrakis, Ple it's, it's, it's Mr. George Plevrakis, CEO, Hellenic Environmental yep. Center, the HCC. Mr. Vasilis Korkidis, uh, our President of uh, uh, Piraeus Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you, Vasily. Thank you, Mr. President. I um, have to honor more of this because I'm a member as well There's in that more. board. And? There's one more. And who is the one it more? It's Mr. Meng Huangshu, the general manager of the Central in you Eastern fantastic. Europe and Central Asia have region not lost of anybody. International Logistics. Sir, if you could you come are fantastic. here, we that are would be fantastic. fantastic. Now, you take a seat at that end. You go that end. I'll Please. take this I'm end. I'm going to be at the other side then. Yeah. Okay. This is very nice. Uh, so, the, 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 I think that the microphone has to go to Mr. Bodoroglu and uh, make the initial uh, 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 short uh, uh, introduction from his side. Uh, Michael, 
you have done a lot of things. Tell us how you started, what you achieved, and uh, where you go regarding the China. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I want to congratulate uh, Nafti Boriki for his uh, forum. And I would like to thank them also for the invitation here. Um, China and my personal, well, when I first visited China in 93, that's uh, 30 years ago, that was in a, in, a, in a professional capacity to carry out a dry dock in, uh, in uh, Pudong, in, uh, in the river on the Pudong side. The Pudong side those days was nothing like it, uh, it is today, you know, with these uh, state-of-the-art uh, milestone buildings now. Those days it was a series of small shipyards uh, with uh, very simple equipment, and in order to get from your hotel to the yard, you had to take um, a small ferry crossing uh, the river, Pu, uh, and going back sometimes was challenging because there wasn't, um, you know, the frequency of the ferries was a little bit uh, problematic. Uh, well, since then, uh, of course, we've all witnessed uh, a miraculous transformation of uh, a poor nation into a powerhouse, an industrial powerhouse, and lately, a technological powerhouse. In the interim, we, have, uh, we were fortunate to build 20 ships of uh, various uh, sectors, by dry bulk containers and tankers. And we have also the honor of working with Chinese leasing houses. We have uh, been financed by Chinese leasing houses by over $300 million. And we paid it all back, by the way. Um, <laughs> And uh, I'm very also optimistic about the future because uh, I think China and Greece are complementary <coughs> as far as shipping is concerned, and not only shipping. Uh, China is a producer, is a technological giant these days, an industrial giant. And Greek owners are consumers. We want to order and buy the ships that uh, you can make for us. Uh, especially now that uh, the challenges of uh, you know, reducing carbon emissions are, uh, are becoming bigger and bigger. So I'm also optimistic and I would like to also commend the professor that spoke uh, uh, earlier that we need uh, to avoid protectionism. All I think World Cup will do very well for as long as uh, the politicians try to make sure that uh, protectionism uh, does not happen. It has not helped uh, historically any nation and I believe that it will not help anybody going forward. Thank you. Ah, Michael, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, China has done a lot of things for you. I mean, uh, you know, they have developed their own land. They have developed their own uh, uh, shipyards through your assistance and the support, Greek support assistance. Tell me something. How possible is even yourself to, de to, to, to deploy part of your operation? This, uh, Luca, you're going to answer to this question as well later. But how possible is to deploy part of your management or your uh, company's uh, uh, operation in, in China sometimes in the future when China is growing up as a huge shipping center? Well, uh, frankly, I mean, as I said before, I see the roles of the two countries complementary to each other. And frankly, I would not like to move our operations to uh, China because we enjoy working with our people here. We also want to ensure that we produce enough uh, skillful uh, personnel that we need in order to sustain uh, the sort of the Greek powerhouse of shipping, which uh, you know is uh, has been unparalleled in the last uh, decades. And if we need to maintain that, we need our people, and we need to focus here. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much. I'm going to pass to Mr. Uh, Lucas. Uh, please applaud for Mr. Boduroglu for his nice. Uh, and the very short uh, introduction. I mean, uh, Dr. Lucas uh, Barbaris, please, your own little speech about this uh, wonderful flow of, of sea opportunities. Yes, uh, so, I mean, if we, if we need to speak about China, we can speak forever. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, president of Safe Balkers, which is a New York listed company. Uh, we have uh, initiated our cooperation, um, I mean, maybe. Uh, 20, 25 years ago uh, by placing orders in uh, Chinese shipyards. Uh, the, the, the second part, which has uh, started from 2019, uh, was uh, the extensive uh, relationship and friendship that we have achieved with uh, 
with the Costco group, uh, Costco uh, shipyards. So uh, basically, we do all our uh, dry dockings in uh, exclusively in Costco shipyards in uh, Guangzhou, Guangdong, uh, Shanghai. Uh, we build ships in uh, uh, Yangshu. Uh, in Dalian, uh, we make repairs. We have installed about uh, 30 scrubbers. Uh, we have installed um, basically all our ballast water treatment uh, plants in uh, China, in, in, in Costco. Uh, in, in this uh, period, the last uh, three, four years that we're cooperating, we have, achieved, we have uh, managed to have the best cooperation. We have made friends. Uh, we, we, we have become friends with all people there. We receive always a very, welcome, a very good welcome wherever they, we are there or wherever we are here. We have uh, answering um, uh, the question of Mr. Uh, proactively asking the question of uh, Mr. Kizadakis. Uh, I, I, I mean, we always, we always have a number of people in China. So there are people, uh, two, three people located in, in its uh, shipyard. Uh, and of course, they change. Uh, we, we had in the past also some limited, uh, some cooperation in, in financing sector. Uh, since last time, I mean, uh, I didn't go to China for the last uh, two, two and a half years during the, the COVID period, uh, as nobody has, has done so. And they went, uh, uh, when China opens again, I was quite impressed about uh, the, uh, the extremely well I mean, how, how well the country is organized. So I've seen uh, the developments after uh, going there back uh, uh, after, after two and a half years, uh, the improvements almost uh, everywhere, even in terms of environment. Um, because uh, in the past you could see more, more, more foggy environment. Here I have noticed uh, that uh, there is a huge improvement in, uh, in, uh, in, in Chinese industry. Uh, and uh, having said all these things that uh, we, we really uh, share quite common values and uh, we have uh, uh, developed uh, extremely good friendship. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, uh, the 10th uh, year anniversary of the Belt and uh, Road Initiative, uh, and I wish uh, this year to become, let's say, 20 or 30. And also, I would like to, to congratulate uh, Nafte Boriki for this initiative uh, that uh, they bring, they, they create here this opportunity uh, to bring to us. Uh, 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 close, I mean, the, the, the two nations closer. Uh, and also, I need to say, since uh, the Chinese ambassador is here, I would like to thank also uh, the Chinese embassy for the support that has offered specifically to our company during the COVID period where we had <laughs> certain problems there. <laughs> and we received the excellent support to bring people back. Actually, uh, thank you. It, is, uh, it is something like, uh, I mean, uh, I was thinking about asking you whether and how you feel in this restarting period of uh, business flow with Chinese. Uh, and certainly I had in my mind to thank as well uh, Ambassador Xiao because uh, uh, very recently we have noticed all of us the number of delegations coming from China to Europe and start, of course, from the, the first main gate of uh, European uh, gate, which is Greece. And uh, not to say that, uh, Ambassador, I would like to congratulate how you manage every day to have so many delegations from China. And I think that uh, the proportion of the shipping delegations is uh, and people and uh, from the trade as well is uh, really very, very important and encouraging all of us uh, for con to continue the business. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Luca. Uh, do you think that we are actually having a restarting point uh, following the COVID? Uh, uh, look, I mean, f I could say for us that we, we never stopped because even during the COVID period, uh, uh, we managed to continue all the business in China, uh, despite the, f the fact that we didn't, uh, we couldn't send uh, representatives in the Chinese CBS, we continue our schedules uh, unchanged, uh, so the cooperation uh, didn't stop. The only thing that uh, stopped was uh, that I was calling, for example, uh, 
uh, our friend in, uh, in, in, uh, in Costco, and uh, they told me, oh, we are in the office, we cannot move. We are two months <laughs> here, and we expect these uh, uh, problems uh, to be lifted so we can go back home. Uh, but uh, I was quite happy that because I did a, a very long trip um, this, uh, 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 this June, uh, last June, uh, starting from Hong Kong, going to Guangzhou, Guangdong, uh, going to back uh, to Shanghai, Nantong, and uh, Yangtze. Yeah, but it is a real uh, recommencement. Yes, so, so basically, it I, is. I, I, I moved, uh, I, I went uh, all around the country, I mean, at least the, 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 the coastal part, uh, and I, I, I noticed that uh, a very extreme organization. I mean, uh, uh, also, I, I need to say that. Uh, uh, someone, when uh, you talk with, let's say, with a, sign, with a Chinese entity, you believe that, I mean, uh, you, you don't believe that uh, this uh, entity will be quite uh, uh, responsive. Or you say, you question yourself, how is it possible that the Chinese entity, let's say, the, the, the embassy or anything can, can be so responsive? I, I mean, right now, I believe that strongly that there is a, a very good communication system that brings the information very quickly from the one a point of the line to the correct point of the line of the line in the in the other country, and uh, the problem is solved. So, also this is a good achievement because China is not Greece. China is a huge country, and uh, there are so many uh, and a huge population. Yeah. So, this coordination is uh, very extremely successful. Thank you, Luca. Thank you. I'm going to go back afterwards to Michael asking about the market itself because uh, before that I had a discussion with uh, Chairman uh, Yu. But uh, I'm going next to you. I mean, we have no. This is George. George Dermatis. George here on your left. Okay. Now I'm going to to, to George. Uh, George Dermatis uh, is uh, a, a part of being one of the most successful uh, Greek brokers. Uh, and we through intermodal, he is lucky enough to have to be son of a, another Greek Chinese uh, fellow, his father, I mean uh, Kyriakos, that he has been for uh, decades, not to say for centuries because it's not correct, for decades in China, and uh, you are based over there. Uh, I need to know. I mean, I need to have your own speech about uh, your experience and uh, the current status and the the p potentials that exist in this flow of opportunities that uh, has created either through the BRI, through the policy of uh, presidency and uh, the new policy, and uh, certainly through the, uh, the, the new changes uh, that uh, are happening in our uh, businesses, including environmental, but not only, it is humanitarian and many others. Please, George. A few questions to answer. Um, first of all, I'm representing Intermodal, which is a, a group uh, providing shipping services over the last 40 years out of uh, Athens, Greece, and for the last 20 years out of Shanghai as well. I have been fortunate enough and privileged enough to be living in uh, Shanghai for four years permanently and uh, have uh, been have had the opportunity to evidence the growth and the transition from Hu Jintao to Xi Jinping uh, at the beginning of the Belt and Road Initiative as well and uh, we have been providing services for sale and purchase new buildings repairs conversions retrofits uh, for um, harbor towards agencies and representing different companies in and out of China. And um, I will not bore you too much with statistics and numbers that have been the, the previous speakers have also mentioned. But uh, right now, the Chinese and the Greek fleet are combined are over 40, 45% of the world fleet, at least for tankers and bulkers, right? So we are talking about the, uh, mature shipping nations with uh, a responsibility towards the world and, uh, and we're talking about SMP transactions that happen between the two nations that are one or the other, or maybe both are involved, representing at least 40 to 45% of uh, the yearly transactions. So the volumes and the, and the, and the actual uh, size of the transactions demand for a competent, proficient, uh, efficient, and transparent shipping service sector to um, supplement this. Uh, one of the questions that, just to answer one of your questions, basically we need to support uh, and grow the shipping service sectors 
in the respective countries if we are to maintain the competitive edge that Mr. Boudrouglou also mentioned before. Um, going back 10, 15 years ago in China, it was much easier to uh, find talent, to, to hire talent from the universities as it was 10, 5, and much harder now. Um, the, and the, ship, the shipping service sectors need, like insurance that uh, one of the previous speakers spoke about, spoke about or uh, ship broking, or even uh, agency representation, harbor towards all these people, they need to have the, the capacity through the industry to, to grow, learn, prosper, and um, offer back to the society that, uh, and to the great shipping nations that we're talking about. Yeah, thank you very much, George. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think that a part of uh, it is uh, more difficult to find talent. It is uh, also much more expensive than compared to what was happening 10 and 15 years ago. I mean, when you want to develop uh, uh, your business uh, and your expand uh, your business in China. After all, I mean, I have a question for the three of you. Uh, the way, Michael, that you see, I think that uh, I discussed this with Chairman Yu uh, in the past uh, before, and uh, the question is uh, as to whether, first of all, you can share with us uh, the opinion about the current market situation, the dry bulk market in the world, and the forecast uh, of the, mar and the market trend in the dry bulk market in the next five to 10 years. How do you see your market, uh, this market itself? And uh, I continue by asking, is there any plan to reduce or expand the scale of the dry bulk ships? The question goes to the three of you. <laughs> this is, you know, the you guy that he's laughing over there is the, the, the one that he's raising the questions. Question. That was his question, but uh, in order to accelerate, I raised this question because he, he told me this, he asked me this. You asked us. The question in a nutshell. Myself. Yeah, so in order to accelerate, let's yeah. keep our answers short because well, we've got yeah, so many more panelists it's, to, to it's get through. It's, 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 really, it's really short, you my see, answer, because there's, no, there's, no, there's no point in making it because I've always been wrong about the market. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Michael, we have to respect you because she's the only the lady in our panel the, now. The reality is that uh, I don't Thank remember you. ever in my life anybody actually predicting the market. We've always failed to predict uh, the good cycles. And then, uh, sadly, we also fail to predict the bad cycles. So uh, it's anybody's guess. It certainly is. Lucas? Yes, generally, you fail to predict anything most of the time. So, so it comes as a, as a surprise. But uh, in my view, the, best, the next uh, steps here is not uh, so much about expansion, but about uh, renewal. And uh, what we are doing is that we are renewing our, our fleet and we upgrade our fleet environmentally because the new regulations are quite stringent and this will show up after 2024 and especially after 2030. So decisions should be taken uh, towards this uh, direction. George, thank you, Luca. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not the Although right person. The, in, at least in the model, you cannot say uh, you are wrong in predictions because you have been successful in many predictions uh, so far, I mean, in the past uh, 20 years. <laughs> Yes, but the, the, the point of the question now is phrased in a way that we are experiencing many cycles. The, the volatility of the market is such that predictions are, are obsolete quite fast. But uh, what uh, Mr. Barbaris as well mentioned about ESG and the new trend that is coming in faster than we anticipated um, is uh, the dominant uh, trend that we are also following very closely. Thank you, thank you. So I think that we are very sharp. Eh? Julie, don't Thank you agree? You. Well, look, you know, volatile yeah. markets we're, we're hearing about here, um, the super speedy to new technologies um, and new focuses, the trend that you were talking about there, that focus on ESG. Um, that's, that's the backdrop. So, so what's it like for the people who are actually living it, working it, eating it, sleeping it, breathing it? Next, we're going to hear from three Chinese companies who are going to share with us their perspectives on their strategy. They're from three ports, and we're going to start with, with you, sir, and Mr. Yu Sun Yang. Um, talk us through what, what it's been like operating um, in, with such a challenging economic backdrop. Okay. Uh, everybody knows, because we are sitting in the Greek and uh, in 2016, Costco Shipping uh, acquired this 
majority shares of the ports of periods. So it means that we are responsible to make the operation and to maintain for all of the ports of the, to upgrading the ports of the periods. So it's already passed almost uh, seven years, seven and eight years. We, during this period of time, and we make the investment of the about uh, 500 million to upgrade uh, all of our facilities and uh, all of the container PR and also to, ex to start uh, to the expanding the cruiser terminals. So right now we are making the operations for the uh, container terminal, Lolo terminal, cruiser terminal, ferry terminal, and the ship repairings, and uh, also doing some uh, logistic warehouse. So during this uh, seven and eight years, and uh, our container throughput, it already reached over five millions, turned over five millions per year. And uh, for our cluster terminals, and we already reach about 750 calling per year for the international cluster companies. And also we're handling about the one millions of the overseas passage, which is a takeover, which is a, a take the cruiser into the Greece. So we also to produce for all of our low low terminals. And right now we're already handling 400,000 uh, cars per year, which is already in the very top uh, terminals in the Europe. So we also, the Ports of Pyrrhus, after so many years operated by the Coast Coast Shipping, we created about the 4,000 people's employee, which is working every day in our Ports of Pyrrhus. And also for such kind of the supply chain, we have the 12,000 people, which are working in the whole area in of the port of Pyrrhus. So I think that uh, we also uh, try to create the more win-win and uh, to help and support our social responsibilities from the port of Pyrrhus. So during these two years, and we got a lot of award from the government, we got the ESG in the stock list companies, we are the member of the ESG uh, companies in the 35 listed in the stock list company. And also we got a lot of uh, a companies awarding of the uh, 2022. And also we, from this newspaper, we got the uh, Diamond Award last year for the, for the contributions from the companies to the uh, government to the social societies of the Greek. So this is my introductions. So it's... It uh, uh, Julian, you know, I want to say something uh, for Chairman. Only the fact that he left Germany to come to Greece <laughs> show the way that shipping starts from here and the, po and the Chinese ports investment starts from Greece. All right, this is very important. And, uh, we are very lucky that we have him here as a chairman. And of course, the Port of Piraeus being that, that uh, gateway, a uh, great way for Europe uh, along, along the Bravo Suez Canal. Yeah. Um, so you, you're talking about all of the job creation that has been and the, the social responsibility. Congratulations on, on all of those accolades and awards that you've won. So I wonder, though, what, what, what have, um, do you think Costco ha has learned from Greece? And what do you think that Greece is learning from you? Uh, I think we, uh, first, why that we have to make the investment in the ports of Pyrrhus. First, is the geography position is very good. And uh, because you know ports of Pyrrhus is in, on the way from the Faist to Europe for all of the big ships, for all of the transportations. So that means it, this is the gateway to the Europe. So why that uh, this is the first uh, reason that we want to make the investment and uh, to bring the containers harbor in the, in the ports of Pyrrhus. 
Second is that because uh, we are the sh big shipping company in the world, of course, it's also the number three or number four in the world. And uh, we bring a lot of uh, container from the Far East uh, through the Port of Piraeus as a hub for the container going to the all of the Mediterraneans and all which is going to the uh, middle of the Europe. So I think uh, uh, we contributed, up till now we contributed about 30% uh, of the container throughput in the ports of Piraeus. So it means within these five millions and we contributed about 120 or one, uh, one million or one, 1 1.2 millions of the throughput. And also, since we bring, since we think the ports of Piraeus to be set up for the hub, then we bring a lot of connected feeders. We established one of the diamond feeder companies and uh, makes operations from the ports of Piraeus every day with the use of the more than 20 feed ships which is as a hub in the Port of Piraeus. So I think uh, just we considering these two main facts, then we, I think we, we, we can developing and make the operation of the Port of Piraeus. Mr. Yu, um, thank you very much. Now what we're going to do is we're going to join one of our guests who is online. Um, so please um, welcome Director of the Board and President of Shandong Port Group, Li Feng Li. Um, thank you very much. A round of applause um, for, for you. I'm just checking that our line is secure. Fantastic. Um, I want, why don't you talk us through a little bit about how your operational strategy um, has had to adapt and change? Okay, thank you very much for the uh, moderator. Uh, so, hello everybody, hello my fellow counterparts, good afternoon. Uh, I'm so happy to be here to join you on this great event. As you know, uh, I'm from uh, Shandong Port Group SPG. We are located at the Northeast Asia, East China, and uh, this location is very near from Korea, Peninsula, and also Japan. And uh, Shandong is the third largest uh, economy in uh, all over China. Uh, by the way, it is also the hometown of Confucius, and also we have very, very famous Qingdao beer. So uh, actually, Shandong Port Group is a cluster of ports, and it consists of seven uh, port, ports. Uh, let's say, uh, port of Qingdao, port of Rizhou, port of Yantai, port of Zihai, and so forth. And our core uh, advantage, now we have just, uh, you know, become a supply chain, port-based comprehensive system of supply chain uh, in this area. As you know, Europe, especially like, you know, the port, like uh, port area, uh, is a very important uh, partner of Shandong Port Group especially port of Qingdao. And uh, uh, EU is now the third largest uh, economy partner and also the third largest uh, export destination of China. Uh, so now uh, for the port of Shandong SPG, we have more than 30, uh, 340 routes of which more than 200 is in the, uh, in international roads. So we also have, you know, direct, direct road to Europe. If 12, two of them is directly to uh, PDF. Uh, last year, in the year of 2022, the handling capacity of Shandong Port Group uh, reached 1.6 billion tanks, and the handling uh, of container uh, you know, reached uh, 37 million TU. So we will become one of the most largest uh, cluster of ports all over the world. And for the uh, SPG Shandong Port Group, we also have very deep relationship with Greece. You know, in the year of 2019, 
the city of Qingdao, where uh, FPG Shandong Port Group headquarters is located, established the fifth, uh, fifth city relationship with uh, PDF. During the same year, Shandong Port Group also uh, have the agreement with the port of PDF, and also we have very, very close relationship in between of Kutko shipping port and port of Shandong province. So I think, you know, between the city of Pilar, the port of Pilar, in the two ports and between the two ports and two cities, the cooperation is become closer and increased sharply. So uh, over the years, Shandong Port Group has always valued the cooperation with EU uh, and also we set up our uh, European branch in Europe. It's, it's now in Rotterdam, Netherlands. And I think this is a very, very meaningful move for us to deepen partnership and achieve win-win collaboration with European uh, counterpart firms. That it will also help to build an open, uh, you know, economy for us. Next words, I think you know we will try our ever, uh, every, uh, you know, effort to cooperate with the. European company, especially the port of Pereira, to you know just promote the cooperation and the trade, transportation, logistic, and the supply chain to contribute, uh, you know, our uh, more power from the port of Shandong province. Thank you so much, um, nice. Chairman Lee. Thank you very much. And of course, a lot of the things he was talking about there, alternative fuels, hydrogen, gas, those are things that we'll be picking up on um, in um, our second panel um, oh. later on um, this afternoon. So thank you very, very much to, to you now. Um, let's move on to, to our next um, panelist, and it's Tracy oh, Huan, sorry. who's the Deputy <laughs> Director of Hainan Provincial Bureau of International Economic Development. And she's going to be joining us online. Hello, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, uh, distinguished guest, it's my great pleasure and honor to join today's meeting and share the uh, latest information of Highland Free Trade Port with you via the video link. And uh, in case that some of you might not be quite familiar with Hainan province and the free trade port, I might want to share some real pictures and detailed information with you. So uh, it is China's only tropical and southernmost province. So naturally, it is a key uh, hub in China's uh, Asia Pacific regions. And then uh, it is also a very important point at uh, China's Maritime Silk Road. So uh, it has already been identified by the central government as the most open gateway and the new door to linked world um, several years ago. So in June 2020, the master plan of building Hainan into a free trade port was released was announced to the world. And since then, Hainan has become a hotspot for global investors. In fact, if we think about China's decade history of reform and opening up, we can see that uh, Shenzhen and then Shanghai's Hudong new area. And then now in the new era, it is Hainan that leads the reform and opening up process. So uh, once it's built, we can imagine that it would be the world's largest free trade port because it covers the entire Hainan Island. And also it is the uh, most ideal uh, connection point uh, for the world's two largest and most dynamic markets, including mainland China and the neighboring ASEAN markets. And then since we are aligning ourselves with the most open uh, market rules and regulations in the world, you can imagine more opportunities would be unleashed during the construction process. So for us, uh, within the master plan, the most important step for Hana Free Trade Port is of course, would be the seal of, of the island, which we mean the um, island-wide special customs uh, operation by the end of 2025. So uh, within our new um, policy uh, and institutional framework, we can provide very uh, preferential terms for 
global businesses to operate here. For example, the first category of our policies is connected with the special tax uh, policies. For example, zero tariff for all imported goods, low tax rates for both companies and individuals. And then we are trying to reform our tax system in order to cut down the tax burdens for businesses. And then the second category of our policy would be much more openness in terms of trade, investment, cross-border capital flow, people entry and exit, transportation and data transfer. For example, we now already allow people to uh, to, to, to enter uh, Hainan Island without having a visa and they can stay up to 30 days. And in the future, the list of visa-free countries would be further expanded to welcome more people and foreigners to work, to travel, to do business here. And also in terms of transportation, we are uh, trying to open up our uh, shipping industry as well as our aviation industry. We are uh, building the Yangu port into a key port in the new land sea corridor that connects uh, the Chinese market with Southeast Asia. And also uh, we are providing a lot of uh, incentives to uh, invite those shipping company, those logistic company to operate here, as well as other uh, companies in uh, related service sector to operate here. And then for uh, air transportation, for example, we already opened up the fifth and seventh freedom of air, which would allow a foreign airline company to operate direct flights from Hainan to a third country, which they cannot achieve elsewhere in the world. So in those areas, uh, Hainan might already have the highest openness. So we can uh, welcome more global businesses to settle down here to identify more business opportunities here. So we uh, have four pillar industries, including tourism industry, uh, modern services industry, new and high tech, as well as tropical high yield agriculture. So more specifically connected to the marine industry, we are uh, not only building ourselves into a regional shipping hub, and in the past three years, the tonnage of foreign ships registered here already ranked the second place among all Chinese ports. So that's very quick development speed. And uh, also we have uh, very close to the port, large industry parks that encourage oil and gas industry as well as petrochemical industry to thrive here. So uh, many uh, sectors related to those industries can also find a lot of opportunities too. We are trying to encourage aqua, marine aquaculture to develop here. We are trying to uh, build Hainan into the ideal uh, location to develop offshore data center here due to our much more relaxed uh, measures in terms of cross-border data transfer. Uh, for example, we are uh, putting the data center to, um, to, to put them in under the sea in order to save energy and to utilize our uh, natural environment. And also, uh, since we have our deep sea industry, we are quite advanced in the marine biology industry too. Uh, we are having a lot of sci-tech um, advanced projects in terms uh, uh, of this industry. And then, um, since we are an island province, we are more sensitive to climate change. So the province is so ambitious that it is the first province in China to announce the, uh, the goal of banning all types of fossil fuel vehicles by year 2030. So we are also a pioneer in protecting the natural environment. Also, we have our own national park that features uh, in the tropical rainforest. So a lot of companies, international companies especially, when they come to Hainan to seek business partners, they also can find a vast space for them to connect their business with the ESG uh, initiative. So uh, that's uh, typical and uh, very unique about Hainan Free Trade Port. And 
Also, the country is aiming to build this island by using our duty-free policies into the international tourism and consumption center. So each day within our duty-free stores, the total sales could hit about 2 million RMB. So that's quite a lot. So international brands are naturally attracted by the sales figures, by the stores in Hanan, and then they are trying to set up uh, regional headquarters to support sales here and to support sales for the whole Chinese market and the uh, uh, Asia Pacific market. So really, I think uh, we are creating new opportunities to global businesses. And also we are uh, hosting the country's uh, only national level expo that focuses on consumer goods. So it's an annual event. We are also a permanent seat for the uh, World Forum for Asia, which is a very high level dialogue mechanism between heads of states. So uh, with all those international events, we're trying to turn Hainan into a very international island and also an international free trade port that all uh, players can join in our construction process and reap benefits from here. And then um, I would also want to highlight that uh, in the past a uh, few years uh, since we have been the hotspot for investors, we have been hosting many delegations, especially uh, delegations from Europe countries. We are having very close cooperation with them to develop our uh, pill industry as well as our, as our clean energy sectors. So uh, we want to promote open cooperation because uh, building the Hanoi Free Trade Port, building all those Pilot free trade zones is China's answer to the. I, I'm um, Tracy. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but it really does sound like um, Hainan is a fantastic um, regional hub, um, a real yes, global, yes. Oh, yeah, a real global yeah, marketplace. Yeah, I mean, Thank you so much. But you know, we've yeah. got lots of other panalists, Tracy, so we are going to have to leave it there. Here. <laughs> Juliet, sorry, Tracy. Yes, I like very on. much the fact that in this plan of uh, Hainan. Next to the shipping center, you have a lot of balloons, and I wish the market will flourish in such a way that we will be able to come there and spend more and more money in the duty free and to raise the 4.2 billion to 20 billion. So, thank you very much for your speech, Juliet. Yeah, yeah, you are most welcome. George, so let, let me let's go move on. on. Uh, Tracy, follow us now because we have next to me this Vasilis Korkidis is one of the man that he cares about entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs and then entrepreneurship in uh, the largest uh, southeastern port of uh, Europe, the port of Piraeus, which is, uh, as you all know, is, uh, is uh, managed very well by Costco ports. Well, thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. I would like to thank uh, Nafta Boriki initiative. <laughs> There is not only BRI, it's the Nafte Boriki that is doing a great job. And I mentioned that because uh, since I was 12 years old, I was reading uh, Nafte Boriki in my father's office. So I'm used to that. I, it's, it's like a habit to me uh, every morning to do so. Uh, certainly, um, uh, I would like to represent the SMEs uh, in the Pareus area, and we have uh, a very good cooperation with the, His Excellency the Ambassador and certainly the President, the PPA Chairman, uh, Mr. Yu, in Piraeus. Uh, I have to, to say again, and I, li I like to say that, that uh, Piraeus port is a meeting point of two global players. The Greek ship owners, who the ranked number one in, in the world, and uh, a, a huge a giant of the sea carriage of goods by sea, which is Costco. Uh, and I would like to say that this is a win-win cooperation. Uh, it's a very good practice. And uh, we never forget the fact that uh, when Costco invested in Pireo Sport uh, in 2015 by 1.5 billion US dollars, uh, Greece was under capital controls. And um, this is, uh, that uh, makes this uh, cooperation very strong. There is a very strong bond on that and trust on that. Uh, because as I, I have, of course, I'm a president of the Paris Chamber of Commerce, but this is my hobby. Uh, I'm an SME uh, entrepreneur uh, in ship supplies, uh, marine electrical supplies, 
and as a naval architect and uh, merchant, I would never uh, place an order to a factory that there was in danger of bankruptcy. And I believe the same they, they, they would do a very wise uh, ship owner to place an order for a new building in a shipyard that was under the danger of bankruptcy. So that's why I believe that uh, this cooperation is going, is coming from the past uh, and uh, is going very well at the, uh, at, the few, at the present and will have uh, a very long way uh, to the future. Uh, I could uh, witness actually Piraeus Port doing 700,000 containers per year, less than the Rajo in Albania. And now Piraeus Port is doing 5.7 billion containers. Uh, is number one port in the, the Mediterranean and the fifth in Europe. That means that more ships are coming to Piraeus, more services are provided, uh, more repairs, more supplies, more jobs, and more income uh, for the Greek economy. Um, that's why I justify the win-win uh, uh, situation. Now, uh, what we would like to do in the future, we would like to advance these services. We would like to go to the door-to-door -door -door services. We would like to have a, a, a corridor between Shanghai and Piraeus uh, for a dry port uh, condition and situation. So uh, more goods will come uh, in uh, much faster and much cheaper for the final consumer. Uh, these are our goals for the, for the future. And uh, we'll work on that. Uh, it's not uh, uh, by luck that uh, uh, PPA was the company of the year. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's a company that is, is, uh, is using ESG. Um, and uh, uh, is, uh, they have always, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the stand in, in the chamber in order to, give, to, to discuss things. Uh, to introduce things, and uh, they are members of the chamber as well. So we are sitting on the same table, we discuss problems, and uh, we overcome them, and we find solutions, usually. Uh, now I would like to say that uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm talking with bullets actually, I know that the time is, is, is pressing on all, all of us. Very nice, very nice. The BRI initiative is a very good practice. We know that it's a giant investment. They have already been invested 3.7 trillion US dollars, but it's also a very smart investment and successive inv investment because it involves 152 countries. And because uh, the international trade, uh, and this is a, I can make a prediction on that, on the international trade that is going to increase. I'm not afraid to, to say so, because um, um, the international trade, uh, because of the BRI investment, uh, has been doubled, and the turnover is now 2.1 trillion US dollars. So that shows that it's a, a successful investment. And it's also a successful investment because now we have an answer from the West uh, with IMEC, the India Middle East Europe Corridor, which is actually uh, following the BRI uh, uh, strategy. Therefore, uh, all this uh, shows us that uh, uh, we are in a very good, uh, let's say, uh, situation in order to, to see uh, the international uh, trade to increase uh, during... Uh, uh, we had this restart, I believe it was a restart, because uh, China is the factory of the world. And during the pandemic, everything stopped to produce. So uh, we, we are in a restart uh, uh, period, actually. And uh, don't forget that the 90% of the international trade is uh, carried by sea. Uh, so I think we, are, we have a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, hope that uh, things will go better in the future. And I close with this one. Thank you very much, Vasilis. Uh, please applaud for our chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Korkidis, thank you very much. Uh, President, you, you understand that you, here you have not uh, heard anything about red lines, but they were all the lines that he has put, the President Chairman put, is green and blue. So you go on and together with Greece, this is the one of the synergies that exist in the port and in shipping, is to start creating uh, 
uh, those that we need the dry ports because uh, nearby Piraeus you don't have a lot of things to do and then to start uh, developing the products and produce it to go to, for, to export them to Europe. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I think that uh, the next speaker is uh, the one and only Green. Uh, you have been uh, Green for years. I don't know whether you follow Panathinaikos, but this is uh, what you have. I, I guess that you are not, but anyhow. So, George Proverakis, uh, the CEO of Hellenic Environmental Center. George. Well, um, thank you. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm green in mentality because um, if, if you look at our posters and our uh, promotional material, uh, one of our brands is Green Ports, and therefore uh, that's how we expand. And we actually embrace any, any initiative that has to do with uh, uh, this type of expansion and, and making sure that uh, we grow, but we grow with a sustainable manner. Um, what I just wanted to say is uh, keeping the structure of uh, uh, the past, present, and future. And uh, I wouldn't want to forget just to congratulate the organizers one, one more time for this lovely event. They have this wow factor again. Uh, is that um, uh, with regards to China, uh, as we say in ancient Greek, komizo glavkas en Athenes, if I say that, I, it means that I'm, I'm not saying, saying anything new. Uh, if, if I say that China has been the powerhouse for uh, manufacturing for uh, decades and decades, and that had spillover effect in other industries, including, as, of course, uh, the industry that we serve. And we serve from a, 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 an environmental protection perspective. That's why, for us, it was uh, a straightforward thing to get involved with uh, uh, with a large and uh, and uh, um, a very uh, prolific and uh, uh, a partner that is actually active in global ports industry, and we started uh, being the uh, European leaders in uh, port reception, uh, port uh, reception facilities uh, services. Um, we started approaching. Also, um, the uh, the Greek ports early, early in advance, and that's why we uh, uh, are involved uh, and have established a, a very good and prolific and excellent partnership with the port of Piraeus almost a decade ago. Um, I, I, will, I want also to jump on the opportunity and express the gratitude uh, to the management of. Uh, of the port for the lovely collaboration we have had all these years, and we, we steadily grew into what was uh, 2022 a record year for us. Um, that was the past. Uh, the present is providing all sorts of questions that need answers or provide even the landscape for more questions to be answered, and I'm talking about what the uh, previous speakers and you have also mentioned and the chairman about um, the sustainability the sustainability aspects, mainly the decarbonization uh, uh, challenge that we have ahead of us and the uh, digitalization and digital uh, revolution that we currently live in. I also wanted to underline the fact that, yes, there also is an unchart uncharted um, uh, challenge with uh, human capital. There's a human capital deficit that we are going through right now. And the questions that need to be answered need uh, people need people with skills, with background, and that's something uh, that is, is a scarce uh, commodity at this point in time in the industry. However, as we progress, and I think that um, I, uh, it has been mentioned uh, quite a few times over the over this uh, uh, the progression of the panel, uh, is that uh, ports are going to play a vital role in in this whole transition and in, in this. Uh, whole uh, uh, revolution in our industry. If, if, uh, if the 90% of trade is carried on ships, and ships is the backbone of uh, global trade, then ports are uh, the central nervous system. Uh, that's where investments are going to have to be made. That's where infrastructure is going to have to be built to support all this transition for cleaner fuels. You're going to have to deal with uh, new types of environmental uh, streams. Um, again, uh, uh, capital uh, has to be raised uh, both in the form of monetary capital and human capital. And that's where we see that there has to be synergies and partnerships. Uh, synergies and partnerships like, like the one that we already have in Piraeus Port, 
and we feel very, very um, uh, confident that uh, these solutions through the synergies that we have um, built and created are going to be uh, found. One thing that I'd just like to mention so that we can uh, change gears a bit, I opened this uh, short speech with, a, with an ancient Greek uh, proverb. What I read yesterday as I was trying to contemplate things about my uh, speech is that out of the 6,500 words, that are, uh, languages, excuse me, that are spoken globally, only two, only two languages can actually be traced in writing for almost three and a half thousand years, and that's Greek and Chinese. That Thank you very much, George. Yes. This is fantastic. It really is indeed. This is, well, please go on. Well, that actually means that we know how to communicate. And if, I know. This and is if what the, the essence of trade is communication, then I think that... And this could be the solution as well to one of the key issues. Let me talk to In one of the key problems that uh, the industry faces, and I'm sure that all the ship owners here, uh, they agree, is uh, the labor, the, the human factor. Exactly. And uh, the issue, I, I was yesterday together with the ambassador uh, hosting a great delegation from China, and uh, I saw a young Chinese lady, girl, I mean, he was just be before, below, I mean, 22 years old. She was studying four years Greek, oh, and go. she was fluent. This means that even a lot of Chinese can work mm -hmm. and start uh, learning Greek in order to work as well in the Greek-owned fleet. Bridging the communication gap will actually uh, uh, move, move trade faster. That's, that's one of the fundamental elements in Excellent. excelling in trade. Very nice, very nice. Juliet, uh, please go on. It's your, it's your turn now, I think. Well, a big thank you to, to, to all of our, our shipping magnets um, that we, we've got here for, from Greece. But, uh, and I am going to come to you very, very soon. But we are going to go next online. And I'm really hoping that Mr. Zhang Qian is ready and waiting for us, the Executive Director and Chairman of CSSC, which is the Hong Kong Shipping Company. Um, if you can give us a, a brief overview um, of where you're at and where you see the main challenges coming from. Mr. Shang Qian, you, you, you can hear us? Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I represent the CSSC Shipping Company Limited. We provide solutions for ships. And this year, the increase of our turnover was 20%, whereas the quantity of our ships, the number of our ships, uh, is uh, now um, managing 20,000 items. We have uh, invested in our fleet and all our ships. Uh, contribute to the global trade by 40%. We have built two ships in other Chinese ports, and since 2015, we have seen several companies leasing our ships. Ships that transport the goods to markets around the world. We have uh, received the Hong Kong Award for Green and Sustainable Business. I hope that uh, we will have the opportunity in the future to work together with Greece and other European countries uh, so as uh, to ensure the green port and the provision of green services. Thank you.
Gong Chan, thank you. Let me just take out my earpiece of the translation at the same time. Okay, so next um, we've got another online contribution from Zhao Shi Ching, the Executive Chairman of Hua Kuang Maritime Transport Holdings. Thank you. Hello, uh, Julius. I'm not uh, completely certain whether there is a question whether you want me to introduce my company or whether you want me to put forward my view on future cooperation between China and Greece or China and Europe. I beg your pardon, sir. What I'd like from you is to talk about what you see as the, the biggest challenge that, that's lying ahead for your company and what you're most excited about. The two are one, Juliet. I mean, what can I tell you? Uh, the biggest challenge in shipping has always also created the biggest opportunities. Um, as you have already heard it said by many panelists and distinguished speakers today, uh, digitalization, um, environmental regulations, as well as geopolitical tensions. With this, we are really embarking into a new world where new trade routes are being made, new types of cargoes, with, which perhaps today don't even exist. Uh, transportation of ammonia in the future, uh, methanol as a fuel and certainly as a cargo, CO2, etc. All of these will bring about ethical changes to the supply chain. And shipping thrive and change. Of course, there will be a huge amount of challenges, but a lot of opportunities a lot as well along along this um, journey. Um, from my company's viewpoint, um, we have been following these trends closely. Um, in my capacity um, as uh, the chairman of the sub, uh, China Subcommittee of the Hong Kong Ship Owners Association, as well as steering. Um, several regional committees for class, for, for BV, uh, for RENA. I'm keeping a very close tap on technological changes, and we have done a few um, joint studies with manufacturers, shipyards, and with class on future fuels and on uh, future maritime environmental equipment, such as carbon capture, uh, on market me based mechanisms. Uh, I am personally a believer that. The supply chain is all interrelated. So rather than ticking the UN stance of decarbonization by siloed sector, I do believe that cooperation along the supply chain is required. And therefore, my company has um, started um, carbon offset strategy starting three years ago. Um, in terms of other um, challenges, um, we are at a time, as a lot of people have seen, where um, the young workforce in China are no longer so interested in traditional uh, production base or seafaring type of jobs. Um, I hope that this will change. And indeed, through COVID, um, a lot of people we have seen through um, maritime universities have changed their mind and are starting to turn back into um, maritime careers. Um, we think that's a very good sign. Um, but we also take a proactive approach in the sense that uh, since a few years ago, we've started working very closely with maritime uh, universities, academies, and training institutes uh, with the view of reforming uh, maritime education and creating pathways for seafarers. And all of these, I think, create ample opportunities for uh, cooperation um, between uh, different players within the maritime industry, but also across the supply chain and the between China and Europe. So all of these are challenges, but also opportunities. Thank you. It's a pleasure hearing from um, you there. In fact, I'd love to talk to you a bit more if we weren't so short on time. Really interesting stuff there about um, the pathways that you're creating for, for shipfarers and how your company's been a real pioneer in terms of decarbonisation um, and the, the, the changes that you're seeing in, in jobs and the opportunities that technology like artificial intelligence are, are going to bring um, to shipping and to your company. Really exciting stuff. I look forward to, to speaking to you um, again in the future and um, hopefully on, on CGTN. But We'll leave that there um, for now. Um, and uh, we've got a video now, uh, a short video, before we then come to, to you, our last and uh, final panelist. The video is from Mr. Chen Jun, the General Manager of Transport Financing Department at the Export Import Bank of China. This year is the first time the the Chinese 
，中国与欧洲各国进出口贸易总额从七千八百一十点五一亿美元跃升至一万二百七十五点八零亿美元，增幅达到百分之三十一点五六。希腊是欧洲文明的发祥地，也是“一带一路”沿线重点国家。近年来，中西关系保持高水平发展，两国交往密切。作为航运大国。希腊在国际航运业中占据着重要位置，也是中国进出口银行在欧洲船舶融资最重要的市场之一。目前，中国进出口银行与数十家希腊船东长期保持着友好合作关系，累积支持希腊船东在华定造各类船舶百余艘，提供融资及保盘金额达数十亿美元，有效地支持了希腊船东船队的优化和升级。比雷埃夫斯港口项目也是中西双方优势互补、强强联合、互利共赢的成功范例。比雷埃夫斯港口项目由中国进出口银行参与融资支持，中远海运集团经营，近年来吞吐量均超过了五百万标准箱，成为赣支线网络完善、服务优质稳定的区域枢纽港，其积极效应和辐射影响正在进一步显现。不断的惠及中西两国人民。中西两国在共建“一带一路”方面取得的丰硕成果，为国际社会树立了互利合作的标杆，用实践证明了“一带一路”是希望之路、发展之路、机遇之路、绿色之路。下一步，中国进出口银行将继续以金融力量助力提升共建“一带一路”合作水平。以中西互利互惠合作为样板，推进节能减排，共建美丽绿色世界，拓宽发展思路，提供全产业链金融服务，坚持多边联动，发挥融资融治合力，持续推动中欧共建，开启新篇章。I I want to add something on on his wonderful speech that I didn't understand anything, but on the other side I know what he said because last week he was in Greece together with his president and the chairman. Of Exim Bank is that a, at this point of time, one of the banks that they understand very, very well the Greek spirit and the Greek uh, maritime entrepreneurship is Exim and is ready to take risk in both uh, in uh, all aspects in any sector of the of the of the market. And uh, is uh, and I'm very glad to tell you, even as a president of the Association of Banking and Shipping Executives for Hellenic Shipping, that Exim Bank is here to help and to support and uh, to get uh, the benefits of the opportunities and the synergies that exist between China and Greece. This is the yeah. summary from uh, the side that because I spent a lot of time with them. And, and another reminder too of the, the close ties between China and Greece with all of the delegations that have been coming over ever since well, um, China I mean, has reopened. It's, it's really important. Um, let's, let's move on to, to our, our final panelists because I know we're running a little bit over time and we are going to have a, a very um, short break um, in a moment or two. And then I hope you're going to come back in the room for, for a really, uh, really insightful um, panel about innovation um, in our second half. But I, I, I want to introduce to everyone, uh, Mr. Ameng Fangshu, who's the General Manager of Central and Eastern Europe and Central Asia region of Green Road International Logistics. So welcome to you. And we've heard a Thank lot you. here about um, mutual cooperation, um, about going green, about that decarbonisation path. I mean, it's in your name, yeah. Green Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I I is it part of the DNA then of shipping of the future? Yeah. Okay, let me introduce our company. My name is uh, Michael. And uh, I'm from the company name is uh, Green Road International Logistics Company. I'm sorry, I, my, my English is a little poor. I will speak uh, Chinese. Uh, in China, the main office, our company is in Shanghai. And uh, in China, we have 16 branch in, in, in China. The most of them is uh, the ports and uh, some city like Wuhan, Changsha, the Chinese company. Uh, which uh, which city Chinese company is there? And all over the world, we have uh, 60 branch. Uh, it includes uh, North America, South America, some country can, who can speak uh, Russian, and uh, Africa and uh, Europe. Okay, I will speak Ch uh, Chinese. Sorry. Uh, uh, 尊敬的肖大使。
，然后各位来宾，各位先生、女士。Your Excellency, our Ambassador, distinguished guests, good afternoon. We are a private company with the headquarters in Shanghai. We have 16 branches in China and around the world. The services we provide are logistic services. And slowly, we are going to offer more services, like, for example, transport of goods, goods that we are going to import from Europe to China. Since now, we are entering the Chinese market. Right now, the markets in which we are active, the markets in which we are active are the Polish, the German. In these countries, we have branches, and right now, we are expanding our services in the logistics sector, and we are also involved in the railway project. In Central Europe, we are also taking part in the project in the energy sector in Romania, in Albania, and other countries. Generally speaking, we are active in several sectors, and last but not least, we would like to thank the BRI initiative since it has allowed us to thrive. An initiative that actually opened up new prospects for me. Since when it was first taken, I was still studying. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but the BRI initiative was a source of inspiration that led me to become active in this sector. And now, on the basis of this initiative, we are going to promote the green and uh, sustainable development. Tomorrow, as I told you, we have the traditional Chinese festival, and uh, I wish all the best uh, to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's interesting, isn't it, how we get this theme that's the run through the whole time, talking about um, these challenges and turning them into opportunities and, and inspiration. Good luck. So, in any <laughs> case, I want to be, I mean, I would like to thank very much uh, all the panelists. I think that the discussion, uh, Your, Your Excellency, the Ambassador, I think this discussion that we had here and the points uh, raised by the ship owners uh, themselves that they continue the support uh, in the Sino-Hellenic relationship. Certainly, there is an appetite of uh, developing uh, what we call the green uh, uh, shipping and the green uh, uh, requirements that we have. Uh, having said that, uh, there is very clear, and uh, as it was uh, discussed by the two judges here, that uh, the uh, ESG requirements is being, is being followed nicely by the Greek shipping market, and uh, at the same time uh, that the Greek shipping market is a real platform of further investments uh, for, from the Chinese, uh, from the Chinese uh, banks. But not only this, because there are great opportunities for the financial institution, uh, institutions of China to enter into new contracts with uh, the Greek shipping uh, and the Greek entrepreneurs. I would like to thank uh, very much uh, President Korkidis and, uh, and uh, chairman, of, uh, 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 chairman of the Port of Paris Port Authority, uh, because through their uh, uh, smooth cooperation that uh, exists at this very moment, which was not the case 10 years ago, it was not the case 20 years ago. I remind you that 20 years ago, the then politicians were climbing up in the center of uh, the Port of Piraeus and uh, setting fires. Now, all of them, they are supporting the investments and we are very happy for this, uh, sort, uh, for this cooperation. And uh, above all, I would like to thank uh, not only Naftaburiki and uh, CGTN, but uh, even my co-chairman, uh, 
uh, presenter here, Judith, uh, for mm -hmm. understanding that I'm, if, I'm, I'm talking a lot and I took all your time. <laughs> well, I think it's fantastic that you're so passionate um, about, about the subject matter that we're talking about. But we are on the clock. So we are going to take a short break now before our second panel discussion where we're going to be exploring how new technologies and sustainable development are revolutionising the maritime industry. So now, everyone, we're going to break for a short lunch. Please be back here in the room Please. in 20 minutes. Yes. So Please that we can start promptly the, again. The and a big round of applause for all of The panelists to remain here to have a picture with Judith and me. Okay.